Captain Starlog, November 11th, 2016. It's Remembrance Day, guys, and I just want to start this Captain's Log off by saying thank you to everyone who serves in the, any branch of the armed forces. You guys are fantastic. Um, I know a bunch of you personally, and keep doing what you're doing. Uh, without you guys, who knows where we'd be. Uh, I'd also like to say a big thank you and uh, to everyone who's lost their lives in the service of their uh, country, uh, fighting for their beliefs. Um, it's the ultimate sacrifice, and today is the day to remember those people. So I wanted to start the log off by with, with that. So um, the first thing I want to kind of talk about um, after the first thing I just talked about is um, a little quote from What Would Captain Kirk Do? Uh, which I want to mention a few of these, uh, one of these in every captain's log because they're very interesting little tidbits. And uh, I think my leadership style, as it were, on Trek Yards kind of applies to this quote. Um, so I just want to read it to you guys and uh, feel free to comment on it below if you like. Um, Though the rigors of leadership leave little time for frivolity, Humor is an essential component for being a versatile captain. Self-deprecation should be used well and sparingly. A crew should feel comforted by their captain's wit and charm. A smile can be a leader's best defense against monotony. Um, hopefully that applies to me. I try to add humor to the scripts and, you know, uh, Samuel and myself just have this, this interaction, this chemistry that really works and I think it speaks to that, creating a sense of lightheartedness and humor in the episodes so hopefully that applies to uh, to me um, please comment below what you think um, but yeah I I do kind of do some self uh, uh, deprecation every once in a while uh, make fun of myself and whatnot and I think that's important but yeah it should be used sparingly and I because of my low self-esteem and everything I do tend to sometimes um, do it in a more serious manner than it should be done so I apologize guys but I just thought I'd read that for you guys and get your thoughts on that um, now you're probably here because of the thumbnail uh, Klingon captain and a picture of Captain Morph now I personally want to apologize for the thumbnail uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk about the Klingon captain in Discovery if you'll notice there's a little ghost image of the discovery behind uh, Worf there and uh, Samuel whipped that up for me real quick usually I do my own thumbnails but he did that one and I'm like oh people are gonna be cringing because you know there's this rumor going around about Captain Worf's uh, series and all this for years so anyway guys I'm sorry I didn't mean to be clickbait I just want to talk about a Klingon captain in discovery because a lot of people have been freaking out about that uh, on a lot of forums saying why would there be a Klingon in Starfleet in those early days and I'm like really um, my theory is my thoughts on that are I think there's gonna be because of the serialized nature of discovery um, well hopefully there's going to be a good antagonist and I think for that time period the Klingon Klingons are definitely where it's at so I hope we get a great actor to fulfill that and fill that role of that Klingon captain, the main adversary, the bad guy, the the Tomalak, the you know the 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 Q, if you were, if you will. I don't know if, if it'll be a villain per se. Um, I think we might see both sides of the story arc that way. There might be a Klingon story component to Discovery, which would be cool. I would love to see uh, the Klingons of that time and uh, just how, you know, their culture was, because uh, we never really got into that with TOS, and Gene Roddenberry didn't want to do it for TNG, he didn't really want to explore the Klingon mythology and culture, but of course that became a huge component, um, which Worf really exemplifies. He, uh, we learned so much about the Klingon culture in TNG and Deep Space Nine, it was just fantastic. So I'm looking forward to seeing smooth-headed Klingons, and the Imperial or ridge-headed Klingons working together side by side on the same ships in Discovery. I think that'd be a fantastic way to tie that component in. Even though Enterprise did kind of 
I don't, I'm not going to say ruin it, but they gave us that canonical explanation for why the Klingons have the smooth foreheads, which I don't really... I mean, yeah, okay, it's, it's a great storyline, it's a great idea, but I, I, you know me, I prefer my older canon, my FASA history, if you will, uh, in, which, in which there were Klingons that were smooth-headed, like we saw in TOS, but there were also Klingons that looked like Romulans. And the reason for that was they were surgically altered um, to look either human or Romulan so they could easier, more easily infiltrate Federation or Romulan space. So the ones we see in TOS were genetically engineered, or not genetically engineered, they were um, surgically altered to appear human so that they could easier deal with the Federation and the humans and the Imperial Klingons, the ones with the, um, the cranial ridges and whatnot, they stayed cl closer to the inner, um, to, to the home world, to Kronos, to the inner part of the Empire. They were called the Imperial, Imperial Klingons. So that's kind of my take on it, but I would love to see both smooth and ridge-headed ridge Klingons in uh, Discovery. Uh, I think that'd be, like I said, a fantastic tie-in to either, for either one of those canonical, ex well, for either one of those explanations uh, the canonical one from Enterprise, or the um, the older non-canonical one from FASA. Uh, I think it's a great mid-ground uh, that they could do, and uh, they wouldn't have to really explain anything in detail because we already know the established canon. And, well, maybe for newcomers for Discovery, they might need to kind of mention it. Yeah, that's odd. I don't know if they'll do that then because one of the things with the new series any new series they try to bring in new viewers and they don't really want to have to explain what's gone on in the past which is makes sense in a way but at the same time you need to kind of speak to your your core audience which is the devoted trekkies and stuff so i think there's a possibility they could do it like that for sure now who they're having cast as this klingon captain i have no idea but i think a main klingon captain adversary that we get to see kind of half and half his life on his ship uh, dealing with the Federation and the Federation side um, the Discovery crew or whatever um, I think it'd be a great way to go and I think that's probably what they'll do so the whole serialized approach to storytelling I think lends itself to that kind of storytelling that you can focus more on the adversaries and not necessarily on the heroes in each episode because it's not episodic you don't have to worry about you know a beginning a middle and an end um uh with you know everything kind of wrapped up in a neat little bow at the end of each episode which <laughs> i'm interested to see how that's going to play out for star trek um i said i've said earlier that i'm really looking forward to that serialized um aspect um but i am re-watching enterprise i'm half almost almost completely through season three and I got to admit, the episodic format um, of the first two seasons of Enterprise, I kind of enjoyed. Um, now that we're in the Zindi story arc and every episode is leading into the next one, much like a serialized uh, show, it's kind of frustrating in a way. I mean, it just, it, it lends itself to the whole Netflix thing where you want to just watch, binge watch. Um, episode after episode after episode because you want to see what happens next um, the episodic nature of Star Trek is a good thing in a way because it does you give, it gives you closure at the end of every episode and you can actually turn it off and not feel like you need to see what's next like right away um, but at the same time it the serialized that approach to it is very much the new way of television shows these days and it's up in the air for me. Like I said, I think it's going to work for Star Trek. I think it's going to be great because Enterprise Season 3 is, is that way. And uh, I've said before, I'm not really a huge fan of that uh, when it comes to Star Trek. But on rewatching Enterprise, it is a lot more enjoyable this time. The Zindi story arc isn't bothering me. Um, it's actually very enjoyable. So the edge of your seat storytelling that they're kind of doing now, um, it's appealing in a way, I don't know. I'm very torn about this whole thing about whether it should be episodic or um, serialized. 
I think they can do an element of both in each one. I, Star Trek usually has the A and B storylines. Uh, not so much with the serialized um, season three of Enterprise, though. It's very story driven, um, but it's done well. Um, much better than like the old TOS episodes that really could have used an A and B plot storyline. Anyway, I'm kind of getting off topic here, and I'm sorry. I still feel I still feel sick. I'm not 100% with it. I'm on medication, and my throat's sore, so I might be rambling. And I apologize, guys. But uh, heading back to the whole Klingon captain thing, I think it's um, it's going to be it's going to be good. Uh, I think they'll do a great job. I'm sure they'll cast somebody fantastic. What do you guys think? Would you like to see a Imperial ridged Klingon? ridged for our pleasure or would you like to see a smooth-headed Klingon as the captain that they cast um, and any ideas for actors I mean I would love to get your input on that uh, and I don't know how the casting's gone I haven't heard any discovery news uh, even from our you know people behind the scenes uh, I just it's been nothing um, well the odd little tidbit um, but nothing worth really reporting so uh, but this whole Klingon captain thing has been bothering me for a while and I thought I'd at least mention it in the captain's log today, so There you go guys. I'm sorry. I Know you clicked the thumbnail expecting something great like well, Captain Wharf series. Yay, and I apologize for that Samuel is gonna get me in trouble because he's gonna I'm gonna get accused of clickbait Oy. Um, But no, uh, I just Yeah like I said, I'm sick, I'm still sick, and it's Commander Cocking's fault, so I want to take a minute to read some of the comments on my last Captain's Log, because I have time on this one, uh, I didn't have much of a uh, talking point for this episode, and the last one was basically just a wrap-up uh, and review of our Mission Canada trip, where you saw, you know, we went on Halloween and stuff, and uh, saw some of our shenanigans, so I'm looking forward to reading your comments and questions, so let's get right into it. First is from Nuck97. Uh, he made you guys sick. Hmm. Lieutenant Commander Cockings has a nice ring to it. Should I demote the commander for making me sick? I don't know. Um, this sickness is really kicking my ass. Uh, my throat's been killing me. Body aches. Um, I'm coughing so much that I've, I, get, I have a headache. Every time I cough, it just my temples want to explode my ribs hurt it's just oh but no I don't think I'll demote him it wasn't his fault <coughs> um, this is from King Hamster Trekkie 6 uh, Captain Foley get well soon buddy thank you man I will endeavor to do so I have been trying to do so so yeah Cuban writer says, I hope you have some more good days with your dog before Scotty beams her up. Uh, of course, referring to Sally. Actually, she's kind of going downhill. Um, and I've actually just called today. I called the vet and arranged a time next week for uh, to put her down. So it is kind of locked in right now. I mean, she, it's rough because she does have her good days. But she, lately, she's been having more bad days than good days. And I don't want to see that decline continue so we've kind of made the decision to while she's still having some good days to kind of end it so yeah that's been done and uh, I appreciate all you guys thoughts and uh, well wishes and you know shout outs to Sally it really it really means a lot to me and uh, by the next captain's log this time next week unfortunately she will be gone but then she won't be in pain anymore so you gotta look at the good and bad sides of that. Uh, so, Carl Edwards, I uh, hope you do a mission UK next year, guys. You never know what's gonna happen with Trek Yards. Jonathan Earl, it was fun seeing your videos. Also, I like your Connie model. I used to dislike the Connie, but the more I see it, the more I appreciate it. It's not my most favorite, but it's now a favorite of mine. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah, I did have the opportunity to show off my Connie on the green screen in the last Captain's Log. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some of that footage after it's been green screened out. I don't know what the term is. 
Like I said, guys, I'm sorry, I'm medicated. This is your captain on medication, so. King Hamster says again, my best wishes for Sally. Thank you. All right, so next one is from Fubar Model Yard. Uh, oh, that was a cool star log. How did you and Samuel get together? Sally updates are welcome. Um, I buried two cats on Wednesday, ain't easy. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, oh, this is a rough captain's log. I'm sick and it's Remembrance Day and oh. <sighs> um, how did Samuel and I get together? You mean like initially? I had done some Captain Foley uh, movie reviews and he, Samuel was watching one while he was doing some editing on Star Trek 2 and he actually learned a few facts that he didn't know so he thought he'd watch more of my content. Liked my personality but uh, and decided to contact me and then it just snowballed from there. We just started talking and we realized we both like ships and he suggested why don't we try to do a web show uh, or something and I'm like oh, okay cool. Um, so yeah that's where we are and now we're two years in. <laughs> <coughs> to this thing called Trek Yards. <coughs> and it's growing exponentially. So thank you guys for all of your all you guys do. Oh, um I also wanted to mention too that Fleet Yards, we've launched the Fleet Yards Facebook page. If you're not a member, go join up. I've added quite a few of you. Uh but Fleet Yards is going to be for all sci-fi ships and tech, uh droids, robots, cool stuff from other sci-fi franchises not Star Trek stuff though the Star Trek stuff is supposed to still be put on the Trek Yards page but Fleet Yards page is up and running so please um, click the link in the description below if you want to go to the page and join up uh, and enjoy some sci-fi and it's, it's actually really great stuff that's being posted I'm really enjoying it I think it's gonna be a fantastic uh, page and some great discussions and things going on there so I'm really excited about that uh, Brett Emig, sorry, you guys make a great team. Love all the tech and Trek on, and other franchises. Keep up the good work. <coughs> Thank you. Enterprise H, regarding the new showrunner for Discovery, I hope you liked the writing in Batman and Robin. <laughs> uh, is there a technology which you know exists today that would work in the era set 10 years before Kirk that hasn't been introduced yet? Uh, maybe magnetic refrigerators or magnetic cooling. <coughs> <coughs> I I don't know. Um, I'm sure we'll hopefully we'll see something cool. I don't know. Uh, Karkov says great log. Thanks again. I hope both of both you and the family feel better. Family's feeling better. I'm not. It's really hanging on to me and kicking my butt. Best thoughts for Sally. I will check out your son's channel too. Uh, two, sir. Yes. Thomas Foley, 45. Uh, he's does some funny videos and stuff. He's like a mini Captain Foley. So if you want to check out my son's channel, please do so. Um, just look him up on YouTube, Thomas Foley, 45. And you'll see what my loins created. Galvers, for the sake of homenage, Captain, with such number of badges you look almost like an old-time North Korean general medals from that uh, from hat to bottom of the shorts yeah last last got this like I wasn't wearing a Star Trek shirt so I had on my three com badges above my Lamborghini logo um, I had this one my TNG one <laughs> and my track yards one so look like a military guy I guess Jared Reddick uh, are those the uniforms from Anavis also, great video as always. Hope you guys are feeling better quickly. Uh, he's of course referring to the TNG uh, costumes we were wearing. I don't know where Commander Cockings got his. Mine was just ordered online. I have the packaging somewhere. It's just a Halloween costumey one. It's not a super great one. It's not an Anivis one. I wish it was. I uh, wish we could afford those, but we can't. So I, I need a TOS one. I don't have a good TOS one. I've got a pajama shirt. That I use for TOS. So, there you go. Ken says, "That was fun to watch." Thinking of Sally, I know how much a family mem how much of a family member dogs are. 
my dog JD just dog lol uh, had to get her eye removed a couple of months back uh, we're all in bits that's also sad see what is wrong what is wrong with this captain's log <sighs> And I commented back, I said, Ken, oh no, sorry to hear that. Be sure to keep an eye on her. Like, ha ha, <laughs> clever. And he commented back uh, and said, don't have to. Now she just walks around in circles, live long and prosper. So hopefully she's okay. Um, it's been a weird dichotomy lately. It's like a different, par it's like we're in a parallel universe. Things are so much different there's odd things happening uh with my friends and at the mo uh, my past model meeting the other night um trump is president it's just it's like something happened like with brexix or brex x brex whatever with britain leaving the <laughs> the eu once that happened there's like a skew in the timeline like we're heading backwards almost it's maybe we're in the mirror universe now I don't know. If we are, I should wear my eye patch. There we go. Admiral Foley on deck. Yeah, so I don't know if we're in the mirror universe or what's going on, but it's just been some weird things. Captain Lokioa says, Commandant Cockings should have stayed away from those Orions, but did he? No. Ha ha ha. Breaking news. I finally got to watch Beyond, and in my opinion, I feel indifferent about it. It may be due to the lack of emotion, but uh, I think I like Beyond as much as Into Darkness or 09 Star Trek. But I did honestly have positive emotion when Beastie Boys Sabotage played. And yes, I like Beastie Boys. We have some good songs. I too like Beastie Boys. I think Intergalactic should be used in one of the Star Trek movies. I think that'd be appropriate. Uh, to be honest, I hope those videos of you two questioning each other is more than 10 minutes. I need a lot of videos like that to fill out my days of YouTube content. Speaking of, I apologize, Mon Capitan, but I have not uh, viewed your son videos as I tend to drift towards more mature adult content, just how I am with other YouTube channels. Well, at least you consider me mature adult content. That's a good thing. That's a compliment, um, which is fine. You don't have to watch my son's videos if you don't want to. Um, but those uh, videos of standing myself doing the Q&As, the Commander and Q Captain and Commander's Q&As, some of them are longer than 10 minutes, some of them are 6 minutes, uh, but there's some great questions from you guys and some great responses from us. And I think it, it's fun because Samuel was sitting here, I'm sitting over here, camera set up over there though, different angle because of the wall behind us, uh, but I think you guys will really enjoy them and uh, hopefully you're looking forward to them. So. <coughs> Daniel Collins says, Great captain's log, and looks like you and the commander have had fun again. Really sorry to hear about Sally. I hope the road ahead improves for her. And we have a little medical recommendation here from Stuart Lynn Sexton. Uh, seriously, honey, lemon, and cinnamon for that cough and your throat. Uh, I've tried that before. Works okay sometimes. Um, have to give it a try again. Daniel Adet, uh, this was just fun to watch. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Gene H, Samuel gave you the Ebolades. I have dibs on your collectibles. That's Gene, we met him in, uh, when we were in LA. He took us to In-N-Out Burger. Uh, good guy, good guy. So he likes joking around with us. But I said I should assign each of you guys a number and then number each of my collectibles. And then when I die, you guys can get your corresponding number. Daniel Pilling. My thoughts are with Sally as well, Captain. Been there myself, so I can understand your feelings about her. Uh, much love from Northern Ireland. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, he goes on to say, That was cool seeing you guys trick-or-treating. Love how when you came back home, there, <laughs> there was the commander with Dot uh, on his lap. LOL. Safe travel, Samuel. See you black and... Back in Blighty, live long and prosper. Um, and then I commented and said, yes, her name is Dot, because he asked, I hope that's her name. And she's, he said, she's very cute. It's nice to see you guys have become real friends. I've enjoyed watching your relationship grow, as well as the real great content, too. So there you have it, guys. Thank you for all the comments on that last Captain's Log. I'm glad I got a chance to finally read some of them again. 
the format for the captain's logs as of late hasn't really done that uh, or allowed me to do that so this has been good so but that's the last that's the last comment and uh, thank you guys for watching me ramble on about nothing because I'm sick and medicated and can't for the life of me lock myself onto a thought so hopefully this made some kind of sense I'm sure I'm gonna watch it back and cringe but it is what it is anyway um, I'll leave you with another quote from the cat what would Captain Kirk do don't just be a leader be a friend very simple and I think that's something that I definitely try to do with you guys. I do love interacting with you guys. You guys send me private messages, uh, ask me your my opinion on things, help you with projects, and I'm more than willing to help out when I can. Uh, I'm fairly busy, uh, so I might not get back to you right away, or I might talk to you for a few minutes and then, you know, or not have time to read your project or whatever, but I'm always here to uh, talk to, and I will get back to you eventually. <laughs> um, but I do, I do enjoy interacting with you guys, and I think a good captain should be a friend, and I think, I, I hope I do that. And I hope that, uh, as the earlier quote said, you know, I put on a smile, I make you guys laugh, and uh, just the right, right amount of uh, self-deprivating self humor. Deprivating, is that the right word? Deprecation, self-deprecation. Wow, I should not do captain's logs. When I'm on medication. That's what I learned from doing this captain's log. Hopefully you guys aren't too like bored. One thing I do have to show you and I want to say thank you uh, to Chris. I can't remember his last name right off hand. The Irish Trekkie. He uh, sent this for me. Samuel brought it. It's the Refit NX01. Chris Judge. There you go. That's it. Um, but beautiful. This is the uh, Eagle Moss ship. Great ship. Really like it. So thank you very much for that, Chris and Samuel. Uh, you both are great. So anyway, I think that's it for today. Um, I'm probably missing something. I'm sure there's something I wanted to talk to you guys about. Oh, I want to show you my mug too. Let's see, this is from one of our Trek Yards admins. Uh, Paul Giovanetti Jr. He had these made up and sent to all the Trek Yards admin team. So that's on one side. And the other side, you got a picture of the ship. I don't know if I've showed you this already. I think I might have. Uh, but it says, you can't always control who comes into your life, but you can control which airlock you throw them out of. So it's great for the admin team because we're always, you know, taking care of the page and, uh, the admin team is fantastic for Trek Yard. So thank you to all the admins. Thank you to Chris Judge for the NX01 refit. Thank you to Samuel for being Samuel and for being my friend and for being Commander Hawkins and the Trek Yards, you know, the heart and soul and brain and whatever of Trek Yards. Um, he does all of the animations, editing, um, renders, things like that. I do the script writing and the social interactions and things. I don't know. I, we both have equal parts, but so I guess I guess we're both the heart and soul. Of the sh we're a team. One of us is the heart. One of us is the soul. One of us is the mind. One of us is the body. I guess I'm the mind because I tell him what to do and then he does it because I write the scripts and then we read them and then he does the episode and if I have to make a change, he makes a change anyway. It's a commander and a captain and commander relationship. I'm, a, I'm kind of like, do this, do this, do this, and he does all the hard work. So I, want, I just want to thank Samuel for all he does, and thank you guys. And really, I need to end this because I'm sure you're all laughing your asses off at me. And I'm going to watch this back and cringe, and I'm going to read your comments and cringe. And so maybe I won't read them for the next captain's log. I don't know. Anyway, guys, till next time, I'm Captain Foley. Goodbye. Maybe I'll feel better next time. Hopefully. We'll see. Bye, everybody.